Wow. No. <laughs> All right. It should be wrapped. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm, like the Mushroom Kingdom. Like seriously. Now listen. Shut the fuck up so I can end this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to An Evening at the Quill and Tankard with the hosts of the Maester Monthly podcast, the moderators of the Song of Ice and Fire subreddit. I am one of your hosts, Michael, also known as Bookshelf Stud. And I'm another one of your hosts, Eliana, also known as Glass Table Girl. And I'm another one of your hosts, Matt, also known as Joe Magician. As as usual, in our freewheeling Quill and Tankard evenings, um, we're just going to kind of shoot the shit about this episode and some Reddit posts. Uh, this, this one, I feel like every episode drives a bigger and bigger wedge in the Reddit fandom so far this season. <laughs> Do would you guys say that's fair? This one's been controversial. Has it? I mean, my question is, is it dividing the fandom or is everyone now more united? But I'm obviously seeing very much only one side of the conversation, but mm. it feels like a lot of people are like, I hate this, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just my brain focusing in on people saying that. I am seeing the opposite. I'm seeing a lot of people that are very happy with the episode that are not angry. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're just running in different bubbles at the moment. I mean, or maybe you and I, like, we come together and we are the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, wow. Eliana burns down King's Landing. <laughs> Bruh. Please don't burn down King's Landing. Um, we did hit, I, I feel like we need to continually do subscriber updates on this because uh, the subreddit is currently at like 636,000 and it was just shy of 600,000 at the last recording. Um, so... You know, we, we are leaping ahead by like 40,000 people every time there's an episode. So there's a lot of voices in this discussion. All the more to scream with when they oh. burn. <laughs> Jesus. That's brutal. Um, you sound just like the stallion who would mount the world. Uh, which reminds me of a post I saw by user Captain Flintlock, which sounds like a great adventure novel. Uh, the post was just titled, Was Miri Mazdur Right? And I think this is actually, I've seen a lot of Miri Mazdur related content uh, after this episode. Uh, obviously, Captain Flintlock points out that Miri Mazdur asserts that Dandy and Caldrogo would pr produce the prophesied stallion who would mount the world, who would burn cities and level nations. Um, is Drogon, they ask, the one that Miri was afraid of? So Miri Mazdur, did she do something wrong? Has she done nothing wrong? First, I'm going to point to the top comment in this post be that person at, but it's not really me it's l chris 24 who is who says miri mazdor didn't claim this it's the dothraki prophecy and miri mazdor just says that now that she's killed rego he won't ever be able to be it but technicalities i for one am shocked that prophecies are wrong and that people thought it was one thing and it's the other thing this has never happened before in a song of ice and fire this is unprecedented <laughs> basically <laughs> it's uh yeah i mean i i can't believe prophecy keeps biting off my prick i've lost it so many times and it's like a sword without a hilt i uh, mean having been bashed over the head enough that j there's no way that the way we think what's gonna go is gonna happen <laughs> crazy i have seen this suggested by people throughout the years i will before we get into deeper discussion i'm going to point out solo dolo 1397's comment so that means that John is the one who mounts the rider that mounts the stallion oh. that mounts the world. Oh well, I think that means that Egret was the one who mounted the one who mounts the rider that mounts the stallion that mounts the world. Um, this is it's, it's complicated. Very much old lady who swallowed the fly, but the stallion that mounts the world. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh is, God. is the dragon with is the dragon with three heads a three way? <laughs> is that what we're saying? <laughs> With a fly? Yeah. Wait, is Jeff Goldblum in this? Why is Jeff Goldblum not in A Song of Ice and Fire? I, we've definitely... Ooh, actually, yeah. We great. must have had this conversation before. I think we have about Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> have we? 
<laughs> oh, probably. Yeah. He's looking at the dragons and he's like, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad that, uh, I mean, that just means you and we're all very consistent then in our character. That's right. <laughs> That's right. My we're consistent in how much Jeff Goldblum would improve the narrative. My character arc is, is really solid. <laughs> I think what I'm taking away from this is that Mary Mazdur did not do enough, that she should have just assassinated Danny yeah. Androgo and the baby. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. How's that for a... Yeah, I mean, hmm. that is a big part of Danny's plot is that everyone underestimates how important she is going to be. Like for a lot of the books, she's basically, a lot of people see her as the person to steal dragons from. Yeah. And then eventually she hmm. just keeps knocking him over and it's like, and then until finally Benero basically goes like, she is the prince that was promised or Azor Ahai reborn or whatever. Yeah. It's like at that point at Dance with Dragons, everyone's on board. But until then, everyone like just sort of thinks like, Danny's going to die soon somehow and everyone wants to steal her dragons and she very much plays into that image right because she keeps saying i am only a young girl and no little in the ways of war and everyone's like yeah you are and she's like yeah i am and i to an extent it seems like cersei underestimated her too i i think part of it is yes she's a young girl i wonder I, I was kind of wondering this throughout the week, like, do people underestimate the power of dragons because they haven't been around in hundreds of years? And they're like, I don't know. It makes fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Heron Hall, that thing, that was just like a little fire they lit. That wasn't like a horrifying massacre or anything. They just sort of forgot about that. I don't know if there's a post about this, but it, I that did make me think this episode about like, Arya spent a lot of time at Heron Hall, and then she actually ended up in the middle of like a second Heron Hall in this episode oh which yeah. um, i mean how unlucky do you have to be <laughs> karen hall over again <laughs> karen hall 2 electric boogaloo wow oh no fiery boogaloo oh mm. well if yep. you if you believe in the avatar universe then fire and electricity are the same thing oh true oh there have been a lot of comparisons of which one's the better show lately i saw uh, those yeah <laughs> I do like them. I, mm. I, I do like Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, they're just so different, though. Like, Right. Very different tone. Lizards and dragons. I, I was going to say Apple and Oranges, but... <laughs> I was going to say it's like comparing The Hobbit to the Song of Ice and Fire books, but maybe that's not quite right. That works, too. Um, uh, I don't know. Gotta love sassy smog. My favorite part. Wait, question. Would you compare The Hobbit to, like, the Duncan Egg novellas? No. No. Oh. The, the Hobbit is purely a children's I mean, story. <laughs> but are the Duncan Egg novellas okay. as close to children's stories as George R. R. Martin tends to get? I guess the Ice Dragon is is a children's yeah, the story. The Ice Dragon is the closest. Uh, yeah, I think you could read Duncan Egg to children, but again, turns out my gauge on what children, what is age appropriate, is all <laughs> off. Uh, that, I, oh, so is George's. I mean, <laughs> thanks, mom and dad. That's true. Yeah, he, that's he, thinks, out, he thinks that's fuck. a children's book, and that, a person ends up nailed to a wall. Spoiler alert: the, the ice dragon. I yeah. mean, the Bible. Yeah, that's that's not a fun book. Throwing it out or there. a short story. The Bible. <laughs> that too. Zero that too. Out of ten. Very not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna go review it on Goodreads. There you go. The I, Bible. I, I, yeah. I wonder if people have done. <laughs> yeah, they that. have. Can we just do a podcast where people like where we read the. <sighs> Amazon reviews of the Bible. <laughs> there wasn't enough foreshadowing for that. Jesus. It felt rushed. He <laughs> the pacing yeah, was oh terrible. my god, that was in fact foreshadowing, I guess, allegedly. In in the book of David, especially. I don't know. I mean they that, that was like early author work. You can't really oh. it's it's so far in the past. It has to be right now, Eliana. Mm -hmm. My bad. It it was literally a retcon for all my biblical history friends <laughs> out there. Uh, wow. The early the early Jesus cults like like reapplied different oh, Christ. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, ecclesiastical <sighs> monthly. So so Miriam Osdor. Uh, yeah. I was I was gonna throw in another prophecy post here real quick. Um mm -hmm. uh, which is by user Rocky Rockington. Um speaking of making things okay. fit prophecies that we see in the in the books. Uh, the title and horses. of the post is, oh, and horses. Good call. Uh, the title of the post is, well, at least we finally got to see a gray girl on a dying horse. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was, a was the horse dying? The horse seemed quite strong to me. <laughs> it was just covered in blood. Strong. That's the take. Strong, beautiful horse. <laughs> What's that drill? It was like something. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was just going to say, it was also like, since we're talking about the Bible, like the death arrives on the pale horse, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I was like, oh my God, the few things I remember about the Bible, it just happened. That's hashtag, right. Hashtag book of revelation. Read it. It's it's a classic. Um, yeah. The apocalypse of John. Um, <laughs> we, um, now someone uh, top comment. What it was it? Nif, Nil frog? Niffle rog? Isn't that a thing from Final Fantasy VII? You're thinking of a Nidgehog, I think. Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, which is actually... Uh, anyway, um, Nilfrog or whatever says, uh, I just thought, beware of the pale mare. But that's something different altogether in the books. I thought the whole point was layers. <laughs> yeah. You know, it could be that... I mean, of course, in the books, it is the pale mare, but then the, I guess... As as Paranoid indeed points out, it also referred to Alice Karstark, mm -hmm. and it's about the ambiguity. Oh, you know, like you were saying, prophecy is a sword without a hilt. Exactly. And also bites your prick off. <laughs> All of those the are things. just bad things that <laughs> happen to you. You, you go to grab a sword, you yeah. can't see you. You lose your dick. It's like that's a bad day. Am I immune? Oh, I don't. Oh, uh, huh. I don't know. Oh. We uh, um, probably. Is that why so many of the people who deliver prophecies throughout a song of ice and fire? Well, first of all, it probably has to do with uh, the witch, the witchy archetype, as you've discussed often, Matt. Mm, but correct. Now, thoughts. there's there's also, I mean, literally, uh, Varys loses his dick to a guy trying to get some <gasps> like sorcery. <laughs> so uh, literally, oh. prophecy bit Varys' dick off. And then there's the oh, thing. Wow, I didn't. Even think the about thing with that. Tyrion's dick, where they kept trying to like cut it off and sell it. That was, oh. I think that was show only. They That's a human the horn. Thing. Yeah, it was oh. human horn. It was in the show, but even still, it was like a dwarf's dick is valuable. It's like, really? It is? Oh. And of course, we can't forget I mean, Tormund saying, Dick, I like it. Um, now that's a... Uh... <laughs> I don't know how that fits in. <laughs> I was really hoping someone would run with that. I, it's it's okay. I think we we can fit that in. That's what she said. I, that's oh. what I was going for because I wow. don't know. Talk about mounting the world. No, so the great girl on <laughs> great girl. Oh, on the dying horse that happened. Yeah, I I thought that was a really good like scene and it was really effective. I was like, Arya, how did you ever survive this? Like, you should not have survived it. Like. Uh, some people were talking about like, oh, Bran sent the horse or something like that. Like, I hope that didn't happen. It's almost like a cosmic uh, reward for her choosing life over death, though. Like, like not not a reward oh. in the sense of like the gods came down and gave her a horse, but in the sense of like the story rewarding the character. Uh, well, maybe they did because like Beric straight up was kept alive to save Arya like five years later. So there that could be. <laughs> I mean, it could, yeah, it's similar going off that barrack thing. It could be like, oh, the Lord of Light's not done with you yet, Arya. Here's a horse. <laughs> Here's a dagger and a Here's horse. A pony. Make shit happen. <laughs> you, you all saw that immediately Daddy, after the episode, uh, the the old town, uh, old town road, uh, edit over that scene. What? Yeah. No. You know, where, yeah, where they took that song, you know. <laughs> Don't take my horse to that old town road. I'm gonna. Oh my ride. god! And you know, is that the song of Ice and Fire? I think it is the song of Ice and Fire. Is because it's it's a fusion of hip hop and country stylings with Billy Ray Cyrus, and uh, wow, I, fucking, I can't re I can't remember the guy's name now. Um, Michael, you have just reached our quota for Billy Ray Cyrus references. You can, you are allowed no more. <laughs> man, you are breaking my achy breaky heart. Man. You're out of here. That is, your band. Lil Nas X. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Lil Nas X. I yeah. will say our Miley Cyrus quota is still open, though. Oh. Oh, true. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> Daenerys sure came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, well done. Thank you. I'm so proud to be on Thank the you so much. I guess you could you. call me Cyrus the Great. Um, I really did <laughs> like the comment on this gray girl post which got three upvotes by the jor which is horse is john fight me uh because <laughs> i'm not even sure what they're arguing i think that john warged the horse for aria 
but it's the it's the aggression of it, you know. Horses, John, fight me. No punctuation. Uh, horse and John are capitalized. What is there that one needs to say? You know, it could be because John has a connection with Liana, Ooh. who loved horses, and therefore John has a connection with horses and was able to help his sister. Oh wait, sorry, cousin. cousin. Your sister. Um, wait, wait, wait. So that was Liana. <laughs> is that Liana Stark, the horse? That that was her, the horse. <gasps> oh wait, no, yes, Liana Stark worked into the horse before she died. Yep. That's what happened. At the Tower of Joy, yep. and she meets up. She meets up. She's in King's Landing because she's meeting up with her brother Pigeon wait, Ned. Wait, wait. <laughs> I think this isn't. Isn't there some line about how Ned didn't even bring back like? lord dustin's like favorite horse or something oh my god oh wow. my god wow whoa this is what the book i've been building up to. that's <laughs> the secret that's why barbara dustin that's why we get so much from barbara dustin right. in the books that because turns out her husband's horse has liana in it oh the my twist god. no one saw coming <laughs> i need a fanfic that's just from the perspective of this horse that is liana <laughs> throughout the course of the series like the first few chapters are like Fuck, I'm a horse. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. I ate hay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, got a carrot today. It was a good one. I miss Rhaegar. I miss Rhaegar. Rhaegar. <laughs> Rhaegar. <laughs> Rhaegar. I'd also like to point out that this user, the Jor, their flair is House Bolton, the and their the words are Wichahiden. So this person, they're looking for a fight. They are. Mm. Mm, that's that's spicy. I will actually... I do, the Lyanna thing, in all seriousness, like the first time we see her on the show as a kid uh, is when she rides into Winterfell on her horse while Ned is sparring. It's on a white, she's on a white horse. Oh, that's right. When she rides in. And then, so um, what, I think there's a visual, like at least a, a, you know, visual connection, like through line there. Uh, and between Ari and Liana, because they don't really look alike in terms of Maisie Williams and I forget the name of the actress for Liana, but in the books, they're supposed to be basically identical. Some Italian broad, yeah. Wow. What? I said some Italian broad. I'm pretty sure Are you allowed to say that because you're Italian? Her name is Aisling Franciosi, and she's Irish-Italian. So uh, I yeah, get to make fun yeah. of her for both of those things. <laughs> yeah. Faith and Bagara, mamma mia. Yeah. Ave Maria. Mom and Maria. Oh my god. The Bible? Aisling Franciosi. Aisling Franciosi, please come on Major Monthly. Um, this is a formal invitation. <laughs> please tell us about the time D&D &D told you that Liana was into a horse <laughs> behind the scenes. Can we also That's get right. the, um, the actor that played Rhaegar on to react to the fact that Liana is now a horse? Oh, yeah. Wilf, Wilf yeah. something? Uh oh, that's right. Yeah, um, I'm gonna look that one up. Rhaegar actor. Wow! If you Google Rhaegar actor, the first suggested thing is Rhaegar actor ugly. Oh um, boy, it's a uh, Wilf <laughs> scolding. I was close. Aww. Wilf scolding. That's a that's a Song of Ice and Fire name right there. Um, Sir Wilf, Sir Wilf of House scolding. <laughs> <laughs> Wilf is like one. I'm just saying, if you flip it upside down, sounds to me like a <laughs> milf. <It's> a, <laughs> a scolding milf? I mean, I think that's like a category. On the that's album. a king. <laughs> I that definitely exists that, somewhere. That auto completes for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, like, I don't need to know that about how you complete. Uh, auto completed as well. Um, speaking of the prophesied return of a great hero, um, there was a post on the subreddit from uh, a user whose whose name has not been seen around these parts for quite some time. Um, the post was by user Feldman10, who is, of course, Adam Feldman, the author of the Miranese Blot essays. Um, and uh, he posted this nice little thing about uh, the three fires and three treasons and um, also shouting out to his essays. But someone else appeared in the comments. Isn't that right, Eliana? Someone we, we, we are familiar with. Yeah, they did. This is, as you said, the prophesied mm. return. So this is user Indian Thane 95 and Indian Thane 95 has uh, left the world just like the Avatar and has returned in our time of need. And by that, I mean the last season. And I think actually they just had more time and life made it work. And also it's the last season and we're seeing everyone mm -hmm. come back, apparently. And um yeah so throwing it out there 
there's this comment from Indian Thane a long time ago. Oh, man, that makes it sound so old and lame. Uh, that I really love that describes the plan from the books of Illyrio and and varies about how you know they were going to initially send over Viserys and the Dothraki to make it look like oh the Mad King's children are just as mad and vicious as he is and then Aegon Blackfire probably who is not in the show was going to swoop in and look like the wonderful prince and and everything and then um wait things went awry turns out Viserys died he wasn't supposed to and oh what what dragons and then Illyrio, not Illyrio, sorry, Illyrio is not a real person. And then Indian what? Thane describes how the rest of the plan was probably supposed to, <laughs> God damn it, was probably supposed to go and how things have changed. And that that's the story that we have now and how the books of it, how the story is adapted to that. So it's really exciting to see Indian Thane back. But um, yeah, who wants to tell us about uh the return I mean, it's it's a it, it was prophesied. It was long prophesied. Um, and actually, like, I don't want to sound creepy, but I I did click on Indian Thane's profile. I was like, wow, wait, how long has it been? And the last post that they commented on five years ago was also a Feldman post. Um, so I think what I'm suggesting is that Indian Thane is actually an an alt for for Feldman. Or are they the sun of ice and fire? <laughs> oh, wait, together. which one's Liana? Which one's the horse? <laughs> I think. Indian Thane 95 is the horse. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think you're right. Because Feldman's still been around and the horse just came in all of a sudden, all glowing like, like, wow, look, the horse. So I think that's how it works. Mm, yeah. It was kind of, I, I, I just, I, it made me happy to, uh, to see Indian Thane pop back in and, and Jeff commented and said, oh, dude, I've missed you. And, you know, there was some good back and forth. I, that, that is one of the best things about the fandom is like these kind of, I don't know. You you don't you don't think like someone just some random username like Indian Thane twenty ninety five like that that's ever gonna mean anything. But yeah, like I don't know. It was cool to see someone come back. And Feldman was like, "OMG, you came back." Um, it's it's nice to see that spirit of community that like is still there even after gosh six or seven years of of discourse and popping in and out of the fandom and all that. Isn't it also weird to see Jeff acting like a human and not like just like Wint from or Drill from Twitter? <laughs> Dude, I've missed you. What, Jeff, is that you? Really? <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't he be like shitposting him or calling him a coward or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where have you been, soldier? Um, oh, that sounds like him. Yeah, that, that, that was my Jeff impression. <laughs> I mean, the, the discussion itself was good too about um, the, the ideas of uh, you know, Daenerys's fire and blood choice being really foreshadowed in the text and built up in the texts. Um, I think that's been one of the biggest debates this this discourse cycle, at least on the subreddit. Um, <laughs> the hashtag. Discourse. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I I do think it's pretty well set up in terms of like in like a roadmap way that this is probably where she's going. And Ian Thane makes the point that um, that's been set up for a long time, that Danny's going to go back to King's Landing, probably like that. And uh, this was Feldman's point that the third fire, she would the third treason and the third fire would probably be the same thing, which makes sense and how the show did it. Um, and it's like this, how often Danny has been like threatening to burn down cities and, all this violence and anger in her past that's contrasted with the like the lovely person that we know and we root for. And it's like a very uh, sly way of George has been like building up to the fact that it will be a surprise when Danny do when Danny does this. Whereas I think if we saw her externally, we probably be like, oh yeah, she's like gonna burn King's Landing in like half a second. Yeah, and I, I think that there's a lot to show us that it in the books, especially because, again, as people have pointed out, especially Feldman, who wrote the post in which Indian Thane commented in his Miranese blot essays, that at the end of Danny's A Dance of Dragons arc, she chooses that dragons plant no trees. Yeah. She chooses violence. Yeah, absolutely. I choose violence. She does. I'm also, I'm, I'm writing an essay on this, um, and I noticed 
that the first time that Danny says that wake the dragon in the same way Viserys does is actually in a dance with dragons too, that she's starting to embrace that sort of um, conqueror fear style of Targaryen rule. That's interesting. Yeah. And I think the difficulty is as she asks in the first book, how far is it from wisdom or madness to greatness Um, or yeah, sorry. Basically she's asking how far is it from like, madness to greatness and it seems like there's a lot of just luck and and hair flips and i think obviously the show shows us that that's not the case that there's a lot that isn't that but i mean this is what Aegon did right on, on the field of fire yeah in heron hall yeah oh yeah heron hall that place that's who uh, i mean yeah Her- it's Her- actually over again. Uh, yeah that's right yeah it, it's it's like one to one with a lot of stuff he did and also uh, the things that he did to Dorne after Dorne shot down one of his dragons with a scorpion, he burned Dorne for nine sure. years, right? Like maybe seven years. I don't remember what it was. An extended period of time. And like King's yeah. Landing folded in a day, That's but a Dorne time. like held out. Um, but, but yeah, Aegon just like raised uh, cities and towns to the ground for nine years because they shot one of his dragons. So I, yeah, I mean, you know, you look back at, at that and it's like, well, <laughs> that was kind of mad, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon and also Rainies. And, and Rainies. I think the Rainies was born. Yeah. It, the, the whole, the whole uh, assault on Dorne, the only reason they survived is because the people of Dorne essentially just like lived in caves for nine years, yep. just like waiting for Aegon to fly by and running back and rebuilding. And he was just like over and over and over again, no semblance of a normal life for anybody in yep. Dorne for a decade while Aegon tried to get out his rage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and if, as you pointed out, it was the death of both a dragon and Rhaenys, and Daenerys has suffered the death of a lot of loved ones. And I mean, none of this is at all to justify her actions. What we're saying is uh, history portrays Aegon so heroically for doing similar actions. And I think you see a lot of that bias, as people have discussed in uh, other places, in some of those history books, like The World of Ice and Fire and in fire and blood and of course that's because those are intentionally written to be from unreliable narrators sucking up Mm. to monarchs yeah that's the thing with uh fire and blood with Aegon in particular we notice i think we talked about this during our fire and blood uh i think we did an episode on that where basically we know nothing about Aegon personally because it was sort of like they can't think of anything nice to say so they're going to say nothing at all about him like we get tons about Rhaenys and Visenya as people and their policies and how they treated other people. And Aegon's basically like a blank slate. So basically they were terrified to write anything about him. I think that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, a- a- Aegon, uh, he's, he's, yeah. he's kind of a mystery. He's a very lonely guy. Very aloof. And then of course the biased and strangely uneven to an extent coverage of Aegon the second and Rhaenyra. Oh, yeah. Both sides were terrible. All right. But one gets called Magar with teats and the other just gets called, oh, yeah, that's Aemon one night. I mean, he sucked. But. <laughs> well, also, like a lot of Rhaenyra's bad things are actually Daemon Targaryen's bad things that she's absorbing because they were married. Like. <laughs> I mean, they were all bad. They were all bad. Yeah. Okay. It was not a good time. I, but I, I do think Rhaenyra got it especially hard in Fire and Blood. She was just framed so differently. And, and I'm like, they all sucked. Why are we not talking about how they all they sucked all suck. equally? And actually, there was some quote coming the, about coming into the season. I think George said something along the lines of like, maybe Danny should have re- uh, read about like Rhaenyra or something like that. I don't know the exact quote, but it was something along those lines, implying that like what was going to yeah. happen to her was probably the same that happened to Rhaenyra. Ooh, yeah. And of course, a lot of that has to do with in the books, you know, there isn't like a whisper campaign going on in regards to John's heritage. There's a full on like everyone's like, oh, here, look, everyone, another Aegon. Isn't he great? And that his claim will likely come before hers as male and also, you know, the rape being Rhaegar's child. Is Rhaegar's? Yeah. Same deal, yes. Is Rhaegar's child like Destiny's child? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Rhaegar was trying to make Destiny's child, uh. maybe, but when they were three and not four, 
the three heads of the dragon and oh. not four. Even though I'm really maligning, I'm really maligning the fourth Destiny's Child number. And I'm so sorry for that. I thought it was beyond. There's a point in time when there was a fourth one. Hold on. Yeah, now we're all uh, we're googling Destiny's Child. <laughs> Um, heavy type uh i see three is is there a big table somewhere is there like a a a spreadsheet with a breakdown oh yeah okay i see it yep right here it says past members beyonce and Knowles carter kelly Rowland, michelle williams latavia roberson latoya luckett and farah franklin i think farah franklin is the fourth one that you were thinking of because the other ones latavia and latoya were like when they started as a, a different band and then they changed to Destiny's Child. Um, oh, yeah. It says here Franklin quit after five months leaving the group as a trio. Uh, so. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because she was a false Tiger- Targaryen. Uh, which, which of wow. Rhaegar's kids was the Beyonce of the group? Mm. Uh, Jon Snow, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jon Snow. I don't know. Right? I- I mean, I, I don't think we, uh, I don't think we gave Rainey's and Aegon and other Aegon enough time to really know what they would have been like as solo artists. Isn't that the case for? Well, no, we got to know Kelly Rowland. Yeah. Michelle Williams got, got shaft. So I guess Michelle Williams then is the Rainey's, and Kelly Rowland is the Aegon, and Beyonce is the Jon Snow. Mm. <laughs> this is one of the dumbest lines. <laughs> I'm of- <laughs> <laughs> we had this discussion, I guess, <laughs> or not. If you think it's one of the dumbest, but this existed. I'm glad. It, I'm no. I'm I'm glad we had this talk. I'm also uh, really happy this came on the end of like serious discussion about Danny's arc and like problems of portrayals of women in, in Song of Ice and Fire I to think- Destiny's Child. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder is is Maester Monthly like the equivalent of you know all the monkeys on a typewriter? Everything's gonna just come out eventually. Right. All the best stuff will will just eventually filter out. Um, you just gotta listen to the other hour <laughs> as well to get to it. Um, now th- there's a comment that's been linked in here, and I don't actually remember what this is in reference to. So maybe one of you guys can help uh, me remember. But it's about Arya. <laughs> Does it's, anyone remember? I don't know. It's about Arya and uh, um, like a, a soldier who says basically to her, wait here, I'll get my manager. What is this about? People thought this was hilarious. I will say whatever they're talking about, I think whatever they're talking about, it's supposed to be a reference to a the time that Arya re-enters King's Landing and she's like, I'm the hand's daughter. And then the time she eventually mm. comes back to Winterfell and is like, I'm yep. Arya Stark. Yep. That's my assumption of what this is supposed to be in terms of continuity. Oh, Not that no, no, yeah, no, no. I, I do remember happening. now. Yeah. When she and the hound are coming into the siege camp and um, that soldier comes up to them, right? And he's like, Hey, who are you guys? Where are you going? And she, she makes some comment about like, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't actually remember what she says. Go tell your captain or something. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Why didn't Why didn't a northern soldier recognize Arya Stark? Uh, because she was wearing the face of Arya Stark. I mean... oh. <laughs> also, why would they? If like the nor like the common soldier or something doesn't normally get to see the person that they serve and also Arya hasn't always been at all of these public events, right? Like she wasn't there during the feast. She wasn't uh, standing mm-hmm. with the dignitaries, yep. right? During uh, the procession. So she's been very much in the background. It would be harder for people to identify her, which now that I think about it, was that an intentional choice on her part so that mm-hmm. she could be a better assassin and stay hidden? Thoughts? She's, she's good at her job. I, uh, uh, I, f- I found the scene on the, the script um, and it's, you know, the, the guard's like, where are you going? I'm Arya Stark. I'm going to kill Queen Cersei. Um, the Hound says, think about it. She kills Cersei. The war is over. There won't be a siege. Uh, the guard's like, I need to go talk to my captain. And Arya's like, go ahead, talk to him. And that's the scene. Uh, no wonder I didn't remember that. That memorable dialogue. We, we all remember where we were when we heard uh, the guard say, I need to go talk to my captain. <laughs> I was mostly looking at his ridiculous helmet. I'm glad they've kept uh, some ridiculous helmets in because I think historical helmets are, are pretty dumb. Uh, pretty dumb looking overall. But but what about the helmet with the little fist on top? The best helmet. <laughs> yeah. 
I would have loved it if the mountain took off his helmet this episode and there was a little fist on top of his head. Oh my god. <laughs> like head butted oh Sandor god. with it. That would have been amazing, actually. And Kyburn, Kyburn says, I I made that addition to him. I thought that would make him more effective. Wait, wait. What if what if the mountain then takes his little hand head and punches Kyburn with it and that's what kills him? That's amazing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then he like flips him off. Wow. This is what people mean when they talk about how we could write the show better <laughs> than DMT. Exactly. Someone hire us. We would put little fists on people's heads. That's right. And Destiny's Child <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum. I actually think Jeff Goldblum is legitimately a yeah, good idea. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Goldblum as Kyburn. Think about that for a second. Uh, oh. <laughs> I actually think oh. he would have been an amazing Mance Raider. Oh my god, he would have been. Now that he's in that kind of zaddy period of his life, yeah. you know, like so like playing yeah. weird songs and mm. talking smack to Jon Snow and talking about Dornishman's wife hey. and speaking all over the place. John. <laughs> John. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I was kind of thinking him the his character from Thor Ragnarok as Mance Raider. Oh yeah, yeah. That he's uh, he's gonna light uh the biggest fire of the North's uh... <laughs> yeah. and then he skin changes a fly. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the best that's part that's amazing oh, yes yes um hell's bells speaking of hell's bells um there's a post uh by soar one soar one the recalio rindoon fan club president is their flair which i think if that's their flair then i'm pretty sure i know who that is on twitter this post is about it's titled Ringing Hell's Bells, and it's about the bells like that Dothraki wear as well, um, and tying that into the bells that are ringing in this city um, that she's attempting to earn her bells with fire and blood by sacking the city as a Khaleesi since she can't earn the city as a queen. Um, I, I think this is a really interesting idea because... Uh, the bells in the hair in in uh, the books. I'm not sure that made it into the show, but it's um, it's kind of an interesting through line. And she does get bells in her hair in the books as she goes through, right? Yes, she earns her bells at some yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Um. I think the first ones were when she burns the house of the undying, and then her handmaidens start to be like. You deserve some bells for that. I forgot she burned down the house of the undying. That's one more thing she burned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. just leaving holy places obliterated. That was in self defense. Oh, yeah, totally deserved. I just forgot it happened. I don't know about this, but that was in self defense. They were eating her boobs. That's true. And her eyeball. They were licking yeah, her eyeball. Too. That, too. That, that's just weird. Ugh. That's how you get a fucking infection. Yeah. Then they get that eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for that. That's my new ringtone. <laughs> it's not going to be the bells of King's Landing. No, no. It, uh, yeah, the bells of King's Landing. My phone goes off and I just sit there frozen for a second and then like take out a lighter and start start set things on fire. <laughs> it was a really good catch though. I don't know even if it's even if it's not directly about Daenerys trying to earn her bells through that. I think it's such a great through line between the connections of bells from the Dothraki culture being about um, just basically signaling death uh, and being a, in some ways a celebration of it, whether that's through conquest, uh, which is much more ambiguous, or, or just mourning because, of course, the bells if you'll all remember, ring for like days or maybe it's not days, I don't know. But they ring a lot after King Robert dies. So they also they're not our, our first shot of King's Landing ever in the series opens with those bells ringing for John Aaron, um, which is kind of I... cool. Like so it, and it's they, they kept I think pretty sure they kept the like the sound of the bells, like the sound effect pretty much the same as well. Um like the tone and all that. So, I, I mean, 
I thought that actually worked really well for me in that scene because it gave me chills to like hear the bells, but in this like apocalyptic context, uh, the bells that we heard back when everything was way different in season one when I was in high school. <laughs> You're so young. I was, actually, I was thinking about something with the bells. Did that plan of bell ringing equals surrender ever get communicated to Daenerys? Because I thought that was just like a Tyrion thing he said on the ground. Mm. No, it got con- I think it got conveyed to her because he was all just like, so I feel like he confirmed it to her a couple times. He's like, so the bells, you're gonna you're gonna not burn the city, right? When the bells ring, and she's like, yeah, yeah, totes for sure. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm pr- I think in that throne room. Mm-hmm. Scene, um, oh, was it throne room? Okay, he does mention it, and she's like, ah, <laughs> that's your idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that scarf on you. It's like same same energy. Yeah. And there's also the um the what was it the poem about the who the bell tolls it tells for you it tolls for you that kind of thing where yeah, it's like john, john don yeah that's supposed to be kind of be <laughs> like surrender and life but like all throughout <laughs> song of ice and fire and mostly real life like bells usually are not good things it was like ringing them was like the death knell of king's landing in a weird way do you think that uh john don wrote that poem because his name kind of sounds like a bell when you say it funny john don john don Dun, dun. Oh no! <laughs> and he was just trying to recapture something that the kids made fun of him for as something like real deep. Yeah. Oh, do you think it's like an angsty thing? Like the bells ring for you, shits. Aren't all poems angsty? Absolutely. No. John Donne is absolutely <laughs> angsty. Uh. I do think that, so. So the bell tolls for the. I, I always kind of read that poem less as like a death about being about death but more about like you have a responsibility to humanity because we're all connected and there's multiple ways that that mm-hmm. poem i think works in the context of this episode and all of them absolutely are sad. yeah i mean that's the that's also the i think it's the origin of no man is an island that poem right um it is unless that one's riffing off of it which is entirely possible. Yeah, but as well. it, yeah, I mean, it's the everything is connected. When you hear the death bells, it's it's for you too because we are all we're all humanity. So yeah, um, really fun stuff, John. We're all the bells together. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this was this was a good post though. It only has six upvotes, but a hundred percent ratio, and no comments. Auto mod commented, but I'm gonna remove that post. because. Uh... <laughs> so our one. Day. Thank you, Sora One D. Yeah, it was a good one. There's also another like use of bells, and usually it can be like to raise militias or wow. like um, an emergency yep. kind of thing. So while Tyrion presents it as the they are surrendering, I mean, there's multiple meanings to bells that are known in universe in real life too. So, so I was going to actually make a joke about Jingle Bell again oh, no, that's good. Uh, at the Red Wedding. But but that's that's uh who was it? I, I want someone they one of the prophets when they are thinking of the red wedding, that's what they say. And the saddest sound was the sound of ghost, the bells. Ghost of High Heart. It, yeah, the ghost of High Heart. And she was talking about that's one of the things that's associated with the red wedding, the sound wow. of those the little bells from Jingle Bell. And again, you have that connection with um that sound wow. of bells and death. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it has to do with Lady Stoneheart. I made a Twitter thread about this, comparing Danny in this moment to Stoneheart. I, the, the essay I'm talking so about will be will be including all these things. But yeah, definitely. There, I think there's a lot of carryover between Stoneheart in the books and Danny in this moment. So you're saying that Daenerys is foreshadowing for Lady Stoneheart showing up in the Absolutely. next That's correct. Well, Lyanna will finally leave that horse and warg into Lady Stoneheart's body. Um <sighs> And then and, she will uh, actually be John's mom. And then everything will like. Oh, shit. But, wow. but she can't say anything because her throat's cut. She don't speak. But she That's remember. She remember. No. Uh, <laughs> and also, I mean, just to throw it out there, uh, Jingle Bell Frey is named Aegon. Yeah. <laughs> um, like his given name is Aegon. Wow. Um, and like um, Rob, right before this happens, the thing that makes Cat obviously slit his throat is that Rob gets peppered with arrows, but he hasn't died yet. And then the episode before this, Rhaegal gets shot in the same way. Just like a whole bunch of arrows kill him and it happens right in front of his mother. 
Damn, dude. Yep. That's a that's a true fact. That is a very true fact. It's a rock fact. This is gonna be a good essay. <laughs> <laughs> My essay is gonna be better. You already wrote yours. <laughs> I never have to write another essay again. That's true. <laughs> Everyone's no one's essay will ever really compete with uh, with that one. I think that was a it was an all timer. I never have to do anything ever again. Yep, your life's work. I'm just here to talk about Liana working into horses and Ned working into pigeons and then Lady Stoneheart. Yeah, you're just coasting now, aren't you? I really am. <laughs> you got senioritis of the fandom. Every I, I don't know if everyone does. I, I think everyone wants to. Everyone wants to overthrow the entire system, but that's not senioritis. I don't know. I, I don't know what to call that. Uh, good praxis, I think is what we call that. Speaking of overthrowing stuff, I guess. But speaking of the bourgeoisie, this user oh definitely God. entered the bourgeoisie because their post received uh, four platinums, five golds, and ten silvers as of recording. This is user Shansha, which is probably how you say Sansa if you have like a serious lisp. <laughs> I just realized. I think there is that a riff off of on, off of Littlefinger going like Sansa. Probably, yeah. That's what I, was. <laughs> I love that um anyway this yeah this received like eleven thousand upvotes um so you might have seen it if you've been on reddit recently but the title was the issue isn't the lack of foreshadowing the issue is the foreshadowing um bump bump bum uh and yeah i mean this post uh this is a shining example of kind of where the conversation is at on Reddit a lot these days um, and what some of the dominant narratives are in that the post is actually about um, how people are reacting to the episode <laughs> and is about um, pushing back against people who saw this coming or um, saying, ah, well, you know, uh, you're the, the show is making it too easy to see this coming so it's dumb uh but also you're dumb if you think it's a good thing um it, it's kind of it's this weird place where the discourse is at right now where we're like talking about how we talk about the show more than we talk about the show um yeah it's it's a reaction to a reaction to a reaction <laughs> <laughs> we are we are so many levels deep in this like postmodern um uh is this is this the e great writing john uh, writing danny yes this is the equivalent of that actually as i'm reading this did you guys see that bingo card thing i put up for the fandom discourse oh yeah oh yeah this you win bingo if you read this post <laughs> they're hitting all the walls <laughs> <laughs> hitting all those walls um hitting those back walls as well this is uh wow. wow um wow i mean i think the reason this got so many upvotes is because it's doing like this this really captures if if you want to know where the discourse is at right now go check this post out because i think this sums up a lot of what the reddit takes have been lately on on the song raised fire subreddit but also on other subreddits i think um just that uh you know, there's this interpretation, for example, that um, they say uh, episode 805's, episode 805's biggest sin is proving Tyrion, Varys, and all the shitty fan theories right, which is, um, I, I don't know, I, I find that to be like, a, I think it's kind of a flawed premise to lump in discourse with the characters talking about other characters. Um, because you're really starting to mix things in a way that's, I, I don't think, productive. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know where you guys feel about that. No, I, I, I see where you're coming from. It's, it's, it's sort of like inferring that like fan theories wrote Tyrion and Varys's like commentary on this. That like they're reacting to what people are saying. Right. And it's, it's, it's a weird premise to come from. It's like the fan theories, in large part, like okay, so. Early on before the season, I thought that Danny being pregnant with John's kid was going to be a big thing because they hyped that up during last season. 
And that totally fell on its face. Yeah. That didn't happen, or at least not yet. Who knows next episode? But like, it, it wasn't like I came up with a theory and then it showed up on the show. <laughs> they presented it and just like didn't do it. Uh-huh. Right, right. And yeah. Right. But I, I just to present another point of view, I wonder if it has to do with like, of course, Tyrion and Varys don't actually have like theories on it, but it's more of that. Tyrion and Varys are presenting another side to the discussion that they think should be a question that the audience is asking. Does that make sense? Like every now and then you'll see stories have like a self insert, right? And I don't think they're necessarily seeing that Tyrion and Varys are that for the audience, but that they are supposed to represent questions. Oh, the what's what's the name of that in asking. Greek plays? It's the the not the chorus. The chorus, yeah. Do you think they're acting as the chorus, mm-hmm. maybe? I they might be. It is what just just providing a counterpoint in terms of what this post might be driving at. Yeah. 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 I mean I I, I can see them playing that role. I think so so this there's a line in the post that I, I take issue with a little bit, um, right at the end, which is it'd be one thing. They say, if the show were actually commenting on hysteria in some way, showing the audience how our male heroes set up Danny to fail. And I guess I don't see how the show isn't doing that, but I think you can interpret it in bad faith to say, well, the show isn't explicitly telling me that our male heroes are bad, so they must be saying that our male heroes are good. Like, I I, I, I feel like it, it describes motive that uh isn't necessarily in the story i guess i guess it also assumes that Tyrion and varus are heroic characters and i, I think that's very much sure right I, I guess that's that's kind of what i'm getting at yeah is like um and i mean granted the show has kind of made Tyrion a little more saintly than he is in the books and i i get that but also um that if you're watching the show and you're taking what the characters say as like representations of some gospel truth then I, I don't think that's a productive way to engage with with fiction, <laughs> especially one with this many like unreliable point of view characters that that we are given in the books. Um, I don't know, maybe that's maybe that's too spicy. Maybe that's oh, it's spicy. a little too spicy. Yeah, <laughs> I would I would also say in response to this, the the posts in general is that they're they're sort of making the case that this kind of came out of nowhere, but they've been having Danny react to people telling her not to kill people and not to burn them for quite a long time. Like it didn't like there's the specific scene where Danny comes back from to Marine while it's under siege and she comes back and she says, I'm going to reduce all the cities to the, to the dirt and kill it, basically kill everybody. And Tyrion's like, Hey, let's not do that. Barristan warns her against it. Um, when she's thinking about killing, I think the, the son of the harpy, now those were probably the like Barrison was overreacting like this means you're going to be the Mad King, but it's definitely a through point throughout the rest of the show that you're supposed to wonder exactly how good and how violent Danny actually is, in a counterpoint to the good sides of her we see. Well, and and along with that, I think you know Tyrion in the earlier seasons he's told time and again that he's a twisted demon monkey, right, and that he's a horrible little monster and finally at his trial he snaps and he's like yeah i'm a monster you fucks like i wish i could tell you (laughs) all like uh, so there's a certain amount of like the self-fulfilling uh character description there self-fulfilling prophecy where if if people in the in the story tell another character enough that they are a thing then that character starts to believe they are that thing and maybe even starts to act that way um so I, I don't know, but you know, there's, there's I mean, something there as well, but I, yeah. 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 And I think that's a very relatable thing. I don't think that Danny's been told. I, well, okay. In the show, she hasn't been told as much that she's mad, but it is something that is in her book storyline. She hears stories as you're saying, like of the mad King and his horrible acts. And she continually questions herself from the first book. And especially comes up in the fifth book as her dragons start like eating people she's like am i a monster oh yeah for sure and it's 
it, she also has this really weird internal monologue because obviously she doesn't know Ares. She only knows the stories, but she does know Viserys. And a lot of what's happening in her arc and a lot of like the threats she uses and her ruling style is either directly from the way Viserys treated her or in response to it, like trying to be the anti-Viserys. So the whole wake the dragon thing that he repeats over and over again, she eventually like starts adopting. And that's supposed to be like a really like a big red flag on her character. Now, despite the fact that there are a lot of people on the subreddit who think that the bells was a bad episode, um, user a feast for George who we've mentioned before uh, and whose username I love uh, argues that in their post title, they say the bells was not a bad episode. It was one of the best and it actually fixed key issues with previous episodes. Um, this post is sitting at a net zero upvotes, um, which means it could actually have like negative 30 or something. Um, the ratio is at 44% upvoted. So yeah, probably not great. Um, but they enumerate a whole bunch of things that they liked about the bells, including um, the bells fixed the overpowering of the ballistae and the scorpions and um, fixed the overpowering and overintelligence of Cersei and her advisors, fixed the irrelevance and stupidity of Tyrion, fixed the story arc of Cersei being the big bad, um, fixed the issue of characters' decisions not having consequences. Danny's heel turn, uh, uh, they said it wasn't properly set up. I disagree, so I'm going to skip that because I disagree with it. Um, Jamie's arc, they say, well, not what many expected, fits with other characters' arcs and the show's themes. The overall story was advanced by this episode and fits with the overall themes and morals of the show. The acting, etc., were amazing, all the production elements, and Euron is finally dead. Um, all reasons to love the episode. So I... What do you guys like? Some of these seem more, uh, I don't want to say valid, but more important maybe than others. <laughs> some of their points. Before we go into it, I will raise some of the things that were brought up in the comments. Like one of these comments from Lul Kul, which says that the issue, in more or less words, is saying that like the issue is that there shouldn't be things to fix and that makes the show have no consistency. And uh, another user, Bicken underscore right, spelled F-C-K-N. So, you know, no vowels in fucking, but there is in right. Um, says that episodes aren't supposed to be new versions of the show. Like that's not, there's not a patch that's made from episode four to five and therefore there's no consistency. So bringing that up as a con context for this discourse yeah <laughs> the hashtag discourse no i i think that is uh and i think that's a really important thing to point out because like um I, this post is interesting because i too I've, i very much like the bells and i i genuinely think it was one of the best episodes but i wouldn't say that that's because it fixed things because like it wasn't I think fixed is the wrong word for what I liked about it. Um, maybe balanced. I think what they're looking for is like balanced here. It, it balanced out elements of the story. Um, like their, their example, their first point about the, the scorpions being able to shoot down dragons um, and how they say this issue was corrected in episode five. The ballista, it turned out, worked well enough to give Euron's fleet a lucky shot on an injured Rhaegal caught by surprise, but we're no match for Drogon in battle. This is how it should be. And I don't think that's a correction. I think that's like a, a development. Like, <laughs> I think it's a, it's a, it's a deepening. <laughs> I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, there was a lot of people pointed out that Danny probably should have seen Euron coming around that island when he started shooting. And like, it was super accurate. Okay. But it was also designed as a storytelling element to be framed as a surprise. And when Danny was ready for them, she came out of the sunlight with Drogon so that nobody could see them. And then she got very low to the ground or low to the water and was using Drogon's speed and agility to move faster than the ballistas could turn to shoot him, shoot her, which shows that she has learned and is improving her tactics. I don't think that's like fixing anything. It's a, it's a character planning for a problem they just realize is a thing. So you're saying she leveled up Drogon during the time in between fed him a bunch of rare candies taught him, <laughs> taught him the hm for fly i mean he already knew mm -hmm. fly but did he know the hm for the attack in that way yep. and then taught him agility no, that's what you're saying uh, right 
taught him a uh, dragon dance. Oh, uh, and gave him a gave him oh, what is it a quick too. scarf? That too. She scarfed him. Um, yeah. <laughs> mm, quick yeah, claw. You're right. No, what am I thinking? Right, you're right. She gave she upped his speed so that he yeah. could. Yeah, well, quick she, upped, thing. she gave him a quick claw and then also up to speed so that he could take that's right priority in first move. Yeah, those change those. I those yeah, things. yeah. He definitely got stabbed when he was attacking mm, the. Uh, yes. When he was attacking the fleet as well. This is now a competitive Pokemon podcast. Wow. Uh-huh. This is what I always wanted. We it's could we could hold we, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Matt and I definitely did that one. Me and Eliana took over our snack, yeah. Yep, I remember that. You remember that? <laughs> and we just chatted and we're like, oh my god, that move. Yep. <laughs> People are in our Pokemon channel being like, I just want to talk about Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, oh shit, Trick Room. <laughs> Nobody saw the Trick Room. And we, oh god, the Raichu is in the Salt Fest. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, oh, it's wonderful. But... I, I I see what you guys are saying, and I think that's a, a good point. And I wonder if it's if it's balance or if it's just basically, maybe it's not fixed. Maybe it's just like it followed up on, it, yeah. like stories do. They follow up on things. Yeah, a lot of things don't make sense without like the next episode. Like the Mad Queen, Danny foreshadowing. Just I, I don't think she's a Mad Queen. Obviously, I'm just saying that to be like to frame what i'm talking about it doesn't make sense until she actually does this until then it's like yeah everyone's like being hysterical over like something it's not a problem until it is and it's like oh so that's what this was all going towards and it's it's the flow of one episode to another and we still have one more to go for danny yeah for sure i would also like to say that i think the Ooh. acting was very good throughout oh, the season i think they've done a great job throughout the season and i don't think that was fixed i think they've been doing swell they did do yep. swell yeah that's all I, that is that is my positive take somebody made a good point that danny or uh, amelia clark essentially showed you her her rage building and her her mind essentially snapping into the violence or choosing to make that violence oh, yeah. with no words that you could see it all on her face and her it's yeah. honestly yeah that, that um shot of her atop the dragon like looking around and hearing the bet like I, yeah, that that was that was stunning. Uh, there was a lot in this episode that like really took my breath away, just like Arya uh, had her breath taken away from her, um, repeatedly. Wow! <laughs> Whoa! I, Whoa! No, to be honest, Shit! That okay? That combo scene with Sandor fighting the okay. mountain was one of the cooler things they've done in this show. Like the cutting between Arya and Sandor getting. Beat down, yeah, oh, yeah. That I like. I liked it a lot. The way they juxtaposed um, uh, Danny and Gregor as monsters beating down good people. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting read of that situation, and especially because, as others have pointed out, you no longer see Danny once she chooses yeah. violence. Right. It becomes just Drogon, and I mean, technically, dragons are monsters. Yeah, exactly. literally monsters. I'm sure they're like somewhere listed as monsters in I don't know, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. <laughs> I was gonna say that, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're definitely um, you, the, the the book and not not the movie series that is based off of anyway. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. George's one of George's very favorite things is to write villains with sympathy, and to make sure that you have empathy for them, so you understand why they're making their choices. Like he's he's uh, said over and over that Tyrion is one of the big villains of the series, but fans have like struggle with that. And seeing how Danny could even get to this place, and seeing inside her head and why she does this is, re- it's I think it's really good storytelling. Uh, and I I thought the foreshadowing was there, and, and I don't know I thought it was good. <laughs> controversial take i mean (laughs) yeah i don't know if it's that controversial anymore i think as time has gone on people have as of recording today people have had that discussion and seen ways that it's within the series and how people feel about the way that it's set up varies oh varies oh 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 my, fairies. That was unintentional, or was it? It was unintentional. Uh, More uh, it. was it? Truly, the ice and fire is, is present there. 
I, I also thought there was uh, some other really cool things they did in this episode that made it great. Uh, one of them was that they made you feel sympathy for Cersei and the Lannister soldiers. And that in a moment, like we spent most of the series rooting for the Starks and the Targaryens. Those have been our heroes. And during this episode, they switch from the heroes to the, I would say, framed absolutely as the villains, except for Jon and basically Arya, as the Northmen start sacking the city and Danny burns it to the ground. And that they were able to do that was really, it was like a gut punch to me, but it was like a very satisfying gut punch, like the sort of thing where it's like, oh no, this is awful, but in like a way you enjoy watching. Yeah, like when Jon is beating up Ramsay and Ramsay grins, I felt like Ramsay uh, this episode. <laughs> oh. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, wow. Kidding. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot uh, about you. Yeah. Like mm. you in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I, I would agree with that. I saw mm-hmm. someone... Uh, this is just calling out like randos on the internet at this point, which is hardly fair. But I did see a comment somewhere that was like, I really hated how they made me like feel sorry for Cersei in this episode and hate Danny because it's supposed to be the other way around. And I was like, yeah, that, that's the point. Like that's, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make you feel sympathy. For I think that's person. literally what George, <laughs> that's literally what George has been going for, for a yeah. long time, I think. And I think maybe the difference is that, uh even in the books just because you get that pov there are times that you can feel even from the beginning both for a character at the same time like how can a, how can we feel two feelings at the same time what is this puberty but um <laughs> that's something that george does very well as opposed to having you only feel one thing for a character and then suddenly flipping it on its head he toes that line that's true. Yeah. He does it really well with uh, Jamie. I think that he's basically tricked a lot of people into thinking yeah. that Jamie was on a redemption arc, like a total one. It's like, do you guys not remember when he threatened to catapult a baby into a castle wall? Like, that's a thing he did late <laughs> in, it, yeah. in the books. He's still that asshole he's always been. It's just that you understand him a lot better. And he has some redeeming moments. And again, mm-hmm. who among us has not threatened to catapult a baby? over the walls of something let the first let that let the man amongst us or let the person amongst us who has never threatened to do so be the one to f- be the first to cast a baby that's all i'm saying the first to put a baby into the catapult yeah no I, I i do though i think that there's an element of like um because the books haven't ended yet it feels like it's way more ambiguous what characters like where a character is on the spectrum of like good and evil and it feels like when you get to the end of a story um i think some people take that as like the end of a character's story is the definitive statement on who that character is and always has been but i don't think that's necessarily true it's just the end of their story like it doesn't erase the complexities and the developments that we saw it's just the end point at the end of those complexities but men's lives have meaning not their deaths like the end point of the story isn't the point of the story additionally if you catch my drift a, mm. your tokyo mm. drift yes but also additionally the good does not wash the bad nor the bad the good that's also true yeah is that not what you were saying yeah that i mean that the capacity for both great good and great evil exists in every human being i think is arguably the point of the books um yeah the good doesn't wash out the bad Men's lives have meanings. Men's lives are complicated. They contain both good and bad. I, and just I as like that. a very like specific example of this, um, Michael, me and you did that live stream where we talked about how John might come back evil and all the foreshadowing between him and the Night King. But he also gets foreshadowing for like the prince that was promised and the last hero and, and like all these good characters too. It's George is not mm-hmm. making it simple for you to understand his characters and they shouldn't be. That Danny has this capability mm-hmm. in her is is there as it is for all the characters like a lot of people thought cersei was going to burn down the city no yeah it, it's i mean danny contains both like creator and destroyer in her right um especially as mother of dragons like dragons are an inherently destructive force but you know motherhood is associated with you know this like you know the creative positive force um which is why the faceless well, men tell Arya that women so rarely become faceless men because women are supposed to create life instead of end it which is a you know a weird and fucked up thing in and of itself but like yeah 
but that's not necessarily true as if you look at Jungian archetypes and uh the way that those mother mothers have been portrayed in a lot of different religions and mythologies like yes that might be true within like christian um the the christian mm -hmm. story right of, especially of mary but you look at characters like um other fertility goddesses like i want to say hold on let me confirm some of these but like you know hera is of course a mother and she mm -hmm. was definitely uh not good you have ishtar who's associated with fertility but also with war you have kali over in india uh the hindu goddess who's a mother and creator but also everywhere she dances there's fire and and cities burn so i think the idea of the mother as a both creator it's that idea right the mother creates but also smothers and you can even see it in other stories like let's say for example um you know i was reading about how that archetype might be used in like market type marketing uh mm. they, again they also smother like like um the mother in pride and prejudice mrs bennett you know she she's their mom but she's also like real annoying and um <laughs> all her efforts actually threatened to thwart all romance somehow not not intentionally but by accident and it's just um i think that that's what's great about daenerys she is both yeah uh yeah i think that's that's an excellent way to put that um yeah she does contain both and i i feel like the mother of dragons title is is the encapsulation of that or the um, uh mother of wolves in the story catelyn stark becoming mother merciless like oh mm, mm. that's an interesting point yeah especially yeah especially when the mother's so often associated with like mercy yeah i think that might be the title of my video maybe i don't know i was just like if something's associated with mercy then that means that they if they control that then they can choose to withhold that as well so that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyway, hash, hashtag thoughts, hashtag discourse. Those are some, those are some fucking thoughts, man. That's wild. <laughs> fucking deep, bro. I, I, I was kind of doing it. Uh, uh, doing oh my voice. god, that almost went down the wrong path. That's what she said. Uh, oh god, the beer. Uh, <laughs> that's what uh, Sorry, Dora said everyone. when he was trying to sneak uh, into Marine. <laughs> Am I right? Oh god. <laughs> Oh yes, Marine. That Cause, place because it has pipe. He was doing Remember it. Remember Marine, everyone. <laughs> you know who? You know who should have come back this episode? Throwing it out there just for no reason. Dario. Da -da -da Dario. <laughs> That's <been> amazing. <laughs> and also would have been a good symbolism of how Danny. Favorite? Danny embraces war. You know, since he's such a personification of like just war and chaos and uh, wanton slaughter. But he isn't in the show. He's, no, in the show, yeah. he's more of like a Casanova. Yeah. Imagine he comes back to King's Landing in this episode, right? Or not back. Um, it comes to King's Landing and he has Ooh. the blue hair and the golden mustache and the, uh -oh. gold, and the, and the blue beard. And he's like, this is it. This is the character development. This is it. <laughs> yeah. Danny, wanted. ever since you broke up with me, I got real weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Dario. Him and his love of blood sex. Roads not take. Yeah. Oh yeah. Canonically, one of the few characters. That is a thing he's into. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the true house of the Red Door? Oh. oh. Wow. Come on. I'm glad that we went there. I'm glad that that <laughs> happened. But wow. Bold take. Bold. House of the Red Door. <laughs> Anal sex. Mm. In her mind's eye, all the doors were red. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh oh that's what you meant i thought we were making another joke about like the brown oh, eye the or god's something. eye <laughs> okay uh, the god's oh no <laughs> what is this riff that we're oh, on god. here what is <laughs> cut it cut it all that's a thread i don't want to pursue. <laughs> and to think that and to think that to think that the next thread we were going to read had the title of despite whatever misgivings i have with the show's current writing i really appreciate the level of discourse going on surrounding the latest episode uh, on both sides the level of this discourse everyone no, this discourse <laughs> risen <laughs> Wow. Um, well, I mean, that's a take. It's it's a recurring thread, given that Rob was going to uh, beat them off from the rear or something, wasn't he? Okay. Uh, True. Wow. We've definitely made. Oh, yeah. I want to plug again. Please do. 
every now and then I plug this, but I'm gonna plug it one more All time. Right. So at Ice and Fire Con, they have a, a they have a workshop and slash or panel where people like are assigned characters and they're supposed to like write a shipping fanfic just for funsies. Mm-hmm. And Scad from Davos Fingers wrote one that was a, a a ship between Rob Stark and Jamie Lannister, and he entitled <laughs> it The Whispering Wood. Oh, it's real good. That's great. It's really oh my good. God. Can we do a spinoff podcast with them and like the just whispering every wood. week we do that? <laughs> that would be Talk not, about not the whispering, whispering wood and whispering. just build on not, it even more. Oh, okay. I meant like that general idea of okay doing the fanfic thing, but you know, that's cool too. Yeah. I think there's a podcast in only a song of ice and fire sex scene read reads. <laughs> Wait, what? Be Does amazing. that exist? Like a reread podcast, but it's just I like, so. I mean, after the show ends, we're going to have to figure out some hashtag content. Uh, Review his sex scenes. Mm. To, 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 to make, episode. so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you mentioned a post that we were going to talk about last. Yeah, um, by Spaceline by FGC. Spaceline FGC. Big shout out uh, to all our <laughs> FGC fans. I don't know what FGC is. Me <laughs> I don't either. Know but I know what a space line is. It's a lion in space. Florida Gateway College it, fighting game community. Oh, fighting game. Is community. it is it Solgaleo? Is it Solgaleo from Pokemon? No, no, it's fighting what? game community you like Tekken and Street Fighter. You maniac. Oh, oh, the FGC. I was talking about the space lion. Oh, part. oh no, space lion. I hope that you, uh, I hope that you are a really good fighting game community f- uh, pl- player <laughs> competitor. <laughs> Horses John, fight me! <laughs> horses John. I think Horses John is going to be my like new handle online. It's going to be one of my new Reddit alts. Um. Horses John, fight me! <laughs> yep, Horses John, Flair, fight me. Um, no, but this post by Space Lion FGC um, was kind of a nice little... Um, you know, at the end of the day, we all do love this story kind of thing. Um and even though there was some some a uh, little bit of nastiness in there, uh, where they say something like, "But that assumes D and D are capable as writers," which I doubt. Um, but other than that, <laughs> really keeping the discourse up. <laughs> other than this one thing that we're going to call out in the podcast, uh, that we don't have yeah. to. Um, no, but I, I think. Uh, I think it is true that really the last couple of weeks have just been astounding in terms of the conversations that we've gotten to have with other people in the fandom, with each other. You know, it really is a nice thing to to have that um, here at the end of all things. I also can't wait for it to be done. Uh, to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it feel like 10 years ago we were talking about how the episode was too dark and now we're talking about like, did was it okay that Danny <laughs> burned down a city? <laughs> I don't know any of you 10 wow. years ago. So we have actually known- maybe five wow. years ago. No, I mean like the long night episode, how yeah. it was too dark. The, like, the light. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You meant dark, not in terms of morality. No, and literally tone. just couldn't see. You meant literally, literally dark. The literal yep. amount of light. <gasps> like episode. Oh, yeah. God. No, I, I you know, looked fine I on my TV. I didn't so. care uh, that much. <laughs> it was dark <laughs> Like, I, mean, I accept I don't know this. If it's fun or not. I was yeah. just like, "Yep, this is life now." <laughs> Whipping yourself. <laughs> I deserve this. Oh no, you don't. Oh, yeah. I don't be like that. Whoa. Through my Whoa. own fault. Through my <laughs> own grievous fault. I'm beating my breast over here. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, the Bible. <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> Welcome to Maester Monthly. The Bible. Yeah, him. It's it's about him. That's right. Yeah, from Powerpuff Girls. What? <laughs> I, I guess. Oh, well, him. Space- I don't know. But I don't know what we're talking about. Him. Yeah, him. Right, him. Right. I'm uh, pretty psyched I got to make a bingo board out of the discourse. That was pretty fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And I think it's worthwhile. And I think uh, next week after the last episode, when the discourse is like at its most feverish, a lot of people oh, are going to get bingo. Mm-hmm. Mm. A fever dream. Oh, oh fever actually, dream. you know what? The hottest fever dream of spring. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's enough out of you. The Hobbit. You know what the best subreddit to, to read next week will be? It'll be subreddit simulator. Find the Song of Ice and Fire bot. I bet it'd be hilarious. Oh. 
Oh my god, yeah. Oh, that's something we should have as a segment. Subreddit oh. simulator, of course, for those who don't know, generates uh, like text based on... Markov chains? Yeah, it generates Markov chains based on stuff from a subreddit. So if there, there's a uh, Aswaf simulator out there and it simulates oh, there is. what people are saying... And it's great. I definitely didn't use the term Markov chain right. I've just heard people throw it around in conjunction with that, right. that, that, that thing. But That's yes. correct. It's the same oh, technology okay, nice. for the predictive nice. text in your phone. It, treat, oh, it treats the entire nice. board job, as the dictionary. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a, a big fan of this comment, for instance. I'm just going to read one because we could do this all day. But... Um, uh, well, actually, there's a fuck ton of really good ones. Um, nothing makes sense. And now the items I mentioned in the comments for my tinfoil penchant, though his motivation for this is to show the world what a true knight for this. Wow, that's actually oh. not off. Wait a second. Is it, that it, a real comment? Almost. It's almost there. Yeah. That's that's an Aswaf underscore SS Give us comment. another. Give um, us another, Michael. Another children? Very well. Um Though I would have put Euron in the books too, right? Exactly. When Khal Drogo made his vow to Catelyn to not raise his friend because he loved her I and mean, thought of her in such a the way. First part, I was like, hot oh, damn. That was a spicy like take. Wow. <laughs> There's literally one here with that has it has an upvote on it, and it's uh why tell everyone that Asha is reclaiming the Iron Islands as a captain of a sellsword company or a ship? Why why tell everyone that indeed? Yeah. That's Oh, I don't know why everyone would tell that. I mean, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, not all of them. Not all of them uh, make make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Um, sometimes some of them randomly link different like YouTube <laughs> videos, um, which I think is interesting. Hmm. Uh, of course, this is probably the the only one that matters, and the last one I'll read, which is why did he come to the conclusion that there is definitely a reach? Whoa, that's so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's it. Wow. I, th I think that's actually the summary of the post we talked about earlier. <laughs> like, if you wanted to too long, didn't read it. I think that's a... So that'll be our new segment: is just reading yeah, really? simulated comments. I'm not against it. <laughs> Picking out our best ones. We could actually do one where, uh, like, a segment where we compare real comments to simulated ones and have people guess. Um... Wow. No, I think that'd be mean. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe, fair enough. I don't know. That's true. That's bullying. Anyway. That's cyber bullying. Oh, wow. Um, I think we are about wrapping up. Yep. I, I agree. <laughs> we probably should have wrapped up five minutes ago. But it's like okay, it, yeah. We good. Yeah, uh, the, the energy is, is changing. Um, <laughs> it's becoming something else. This is becoming the fire and blood stream. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. No, you mean the the Cerns of the Durgan stream, oh, the Cerns right? Of the Durgan. That's that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. We still haven't done Mario Brothers. Yeah. Yet. Oh, shit. Yeah, we'll, we'll do Mario Brothers. Fat Waldo really wants to be in on that. I mean, there's going to be so much time after the show. People are going to want something. Yes. The, the people are sewing Mario banners, crying out for us. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is wait wait wait. <laughs> Mario is, ben. is Gregor Clegane a Goomba from that movie? I think he is. <laughs> he is. Didn't we have that that discussion, especially based on his helmet? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, the out. way that he should have gone out is being stomped on by Mario Naharis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a Mario Naharis yet? Okay. There's got to be a Mario Naharis. Uh, <laughs> Wait, hold on. But that's why the mountain would have a little fist on his head. So when he gets stomped on top, he can punch back up. You're so right. He was thinking ahead. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tyrion jumped on a what? turtle in when he was on the... Uh, um, yes, he did. Uh, the, the boat on the ruin. Oh. Right? Wow. Yeah. That's Bowser. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Oh uh, wait, are the dragons the other, the other side of the wait, evolutionary wait, wait. chain? So, <laughs> like in the movie, is is when Bran skin changes into an animal? Is he like Mario wearing a tanuki suit? <laughs> yeah. Oh god, yes. That's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And just like the children of Korok, he can throw this fireballs. Is... Uh... Oh. Wait, wait, wait! Is Yoshi actually the dragon? Yes. 
Like is the Yoshi is Yoshi's Island the counterpart story that is Daenerys' story? I think you're right with the eggs. <laughs> Wait, what, mm-hmm. Island is how Drogon sees the world. Can someone put that uh, over top of the like the, the rays of King's Landing? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Innocent people screaming. <laughs> Goomba. They're just Goomba to him. Yeah. Uh huh. Despite whatever misgivings I have with the show's current writing, I really appreciate the level of discourse <laughs> going on. <laughs> oh God! I think the real, the real uh, keep having great intellectual. Discussion. The real takeaway here is that we are just completely batshit at the end of this season with, like, the amount of <laughs> discourse and Reddit comments that we've had to look at. Um. I, I just, Wait, I got it. The Mad Queen is us. We are yes. the Mad Queen. So, like, if we assume that Mario is a Song of Ice and Fire, so Mario Kart yes. must exist. Is Rainbow Road the Demon Road? <gasps> <gasps> yes. I have nothing beyond a guess, but yeah. These are important questions. Yeah, I think you might be right. These are the questions we should have been asking of the series years ago. If we had asked these sorts of questions before, maybe, you know, people wouldn't have felt that this episode and the direction that the season has gone was so unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hated that time Daisy turned around and burned down the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> you think- oh, the Mushroom <laughs> people. Who is, who's Toad? <laughs> who's Toad? Arya. <laughs> wait, wait. It's Toad. Tyrion. Oh no! I don't think Tyrion. I don't know. Vera. Vera. I was gonna say Vera. <laughs> mm. Who's Luigi? Who gets to be Luigi? Theon. Theon is Luigi. I get. I get big oh. Luigi energy from him. Oh, that's a take. Do you remember Luigi's wow. haunted, haunted yeah. mansion? Isn't that basically Winterfell? Yeah, I was thinking that just now right now. Oh, <gasps> the ghost in Winterfell. That's the ghost yes. in Winterfell chapter. Wow. Guys, if you're listening, this wow. is what happens when three people who know a lot about A Song of Ice and Fire have lost their minds. That's exactly right. I'm surprised that if anyone's still I'm surprised if anyone's still listening to us at this point and yeah, hasn't turned this off. You guys are really <laughs> Jeff will be listening and we will almost kill him again from laughter while he's running. That's right. That's right. Mm. Three trees and he shall know. Or <laughs> shall he know? It, it says, will you know? Not you will know. Whatever. I, anyways, I was like, oh, that sentence construction is real unique. <laughs> unique. That's a, that's, that's a good way for an editor to put it, I think. Hey, George, you made some really unique sentences in this book. <laughs> Try writing better. No, I mean, it, sound, it sounds like real ominous, you know, three treasons will yeah. you know. Three treasons will you know one that's big one will grow <laughs> like a mushroom <laughs> like a mushroom or, or like when you like take a star seat. when you take a star uh, yep yep oh, that's yep. Blood armor yeah uh great wonderful um summer hall is the bowser <laughs> castle level uh this has been another evening at the quill and tankard with the hosts of Maester Monthly, the moderators of Song, Vice, and Fire subreddit. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Acast. Um, always you can find us on YouTube as well. You can find our social media presence upon the websites of Facebook and Twitter. Um, and on both of them, I will think that you have gone completely mad, as you are genetically predisposed to, if you do not smash the MF and like button. Um, I have been... One of your hosts, Michael, also known as Bookshelf Stud. And I've been another one of your hosts, Eliana, also known as Glass Table Girl. And I've been another one of your hosts, Matt, also known as Joe Magician. As always, thank you to everyone for listening. Thank you to everyone on the subreddit for creating such interesting content to discuss. We look forward to discussing your content about the final episode of Game of Thrones next week. So you can catch us then. Then is the time you can catch us. Peace out, Holmes. 